Wow. Howdy folks, welcome to the garage. <laughs> Coffee and tools here, always, you know, and uh, we've got uh, something in this week that Viber sent this over to us to take a look at it and we're going to put it together. It's a welding cart, but I have one from Harbor Freight, just so happens, and I've had nothing but str a struggle with it and different complaints and problems, and I thought this one might answer those problems. So I think it would be fair to compare the two because they're in that same kind of, you know, low price range. Yeah. I have a feeling Viva's gonna come out on top on this one, but let's see, we're gonna find out. Hang in and let's get this thing started. Yes, as promised, uh, Harbor Freight versus Viva today <laughs> in the welding carts. Uh, Harbor Freight welding cart. Yeah, uh, uh, Viva welding cart, okay. This is the bottom. This is the economy welding cart from Harbor Free. It's cheap, you know, and it's built cheap and it goes together cheap. <laughs> this is the Viver. It's cheap. It's the bottom line that they offer. There is a little bit of a difference and there's a bunch of difference in the features even. So I thought we'd cover all that today because there is, it seems like there's a world of difference. Uh, there really, there really is, but there's reasons for why I want to move off of this cart and move into the Vivor with my own machine because yeah, this has been done nothing but a headache and it's getting big. The headache keeps getting bigger. So yeah, it's time to do something. So let's start with the talk about the features and the price. So why would I compare these two? Well, when I went shopping for a welding cart, I was uh, a budget always, you know, be budget, you know, I want to spend well under $100. I want to stay under $100 and get a decent welding cart that I could keep all my welding supplies with. I looked around and I got shocked. A decent welding cart, you know, 300, 600, uh, wow, you know. And then I ran into Harbor Freight and was like, uh, you know, uh, forget what exactly it cost, but I think it was 50, 60 bucks, something like that. I think he even had a coupon. So I got the uh, Harbor Freight welding cart. I have not been happy with it since day one. Uh, putting it together, it was uh, it was nasty. Nothing lined up well, and I had to take a rubber hammer and bang the sheet metal around a little bit to get it to form properly. But I got it together and got my welder on it, and it's it was like it's not very good. There's only two hooks here to hang your cables. Uh, also, I stored my helmet here, which let me show you one of the reasons I really like this idea of putting your helmet in there. I'm gonna get my helmet. Oh yeah. Now this is not the uh, main helmet uh, of choice. This is my oldest helmet. I've had this one for well over 35, 40 plus whatever it is years. In fact, uh, the company I worked for in Dallas, uh, their sticker still here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that you know, from the shop and everything, every piece of junk in the shop ends up inside my welding helmet. Even though if I try to keep it this way, I still seem to get cobwebs and junk and everything else in there. So this was never a good thing. Uh, Vivers, the feature, the first thing I noticed was it has a cabinet. Now I'm gonna take this door off and leave it off. I don't want the door, but I want you guys to see it has a locking with a really nice set of keys door here. So you can lock this part of the cabinet up, but that's to secure your welding helmet if you're in a, like a shop, more of a shop type environment. And, my, and for me, all I wanna do is be able to put my welding helmet in there and keep it nice and clean, keep this especially nice and clean. So when I wanna use it, it's, it's, it's it's out of the junk area, you know, I was like, yeah. So, yeah, definitely two, di two big differences. Now, they're both under $100, but one's a little more money than the other, and that's kind of gonna be a little push today, but at the same time, right now, I looked at the uh, full retail price of this one. The full retail price of this one. Now, there is a difference. Harbor Freight, sometimes they'll choke you and throw a coupon or something at you and, you know, get 10% off or whatever. Uh, except for certain items in the store, you know, you know the story. And so you're gonna pay around 50 bucks for this thing. And that's okay, that's fine, okay, it is what it is. This one here lists for about $80, but a lot of times they have fire sale or, you know, 20% off discounts and stuff. So you're probably gonna pay just a little bit more, but you're gonna get into this one, you know. And this one here has so many better features, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's a big step up. But the whole thing behind Vibor is they sell at, they say, tough tools, you know, at half the price. And this is not a good comparison. Now, if I had one that was like this from, say, Harbor Freight or another company I'm thinking of, uh, theirs lists for around $160. So it's this size with these features. 
So this is half the price, you know? So I was like, okay, good, but we're not comparing. We're, what we're gonna do is stay under $100 and we're on Harbor Freight, <laughs> beaver, you know? Uh, the first thing is, I like I said, it was this right here. The second thing is, look at the hook storage on your cables. And that always drove me crazy because my cables would drag on the floor and stuff when I was moving my cart around because you only have the two hooks on the Harbor Freight model. This one here has a total of eight hooks actually, but you can wind your cables up, your ground for one side, your hot, or you know, your, your stinger, whatever it is you're using for welding or whether it's a you know, MIG welder, whatever, can be on the other side. I love that because you don't have all the cable all messed up and pile up on one side of the cart. You can split the load right away. Also, you notice you've got this really tall storage area to keep goodies in for your welding supplies and other things, the welding rod, the, uh, the spools for the MIG, whatever welding supplies you have, your hammers, clamps. I, I like to keep everything you know, on the cart. And this one, I really couldn't do it because there wasn't enough space, plus shove a helmet underneath. It was like, you know, there's just not enough cart here. Yeah, the next thing, which, uh, which you can obviously see pretty good even from the camera's angle probably, this one is a lot wider. In fact, I measured it. It's, it's almost two inches wider than the Harbor Freight. And the Harbor Freight model, the very first thing I ran into was my MIG welder. When I put it up here, I couldn't get the door open. So I had to get some wood and shim it up. But now I lost the safety of this angled shelf because my MIG welder could theoretically slide off the back. So I had to tie the welder down and at the same time still have access to, the, to open the door. So this was becoming a real pain in the you know what, yeah. And I tried shimming and I started thinking about adding some sheet metal to the corners and it was like, this, is, this cart is really getting bad, you know. This one here is two inches wider. It's also higher and it's deeper. So it allows the welder to sit up top here and without any interference, I can open the side of the MIG welder and access what I need. So that was, that's just some differences right there. And you can probably see it in the camera, I don't know, but I'm gonna take a look at the wheels. The Beaver set of roller wheels at the front here are heavier and better built and just a nicer set of wheels at the front. <laughs> the back wheels are, it's, it's, it's worse. <laughs> the back wheels on the Beaver machine are larger and wider and will carry rated up over 200 pounds. So automatically the Harbor Freight ones, which look like something off of a kid's toy, you know. Yeah, again, just not a good program, but there's the differences, okay? We're just, you know, we're talking nuts and bolts. Yeah. <laughs> now, both of these did not assemble well. So I don't want to give you the impression that this thing went together like a, you know, a model plane or something. No, you know. There was some struggle putting this together. Uh, there was uh, problems with the hardware, you know, that kind of thing, lining up the holes and everything. It was a lot of hassle. It wasn't, it's not well made. It's not a $600, mach, you know, piece of equipment, obviously. But uh, it does have some welds here on these corners, which were really poor. The Harbor Freight one has no weld. It was just bent up and they left it and, you know, that was that. So not a big, not a big issue in comparison. I would say, yeah, you know, I would almost give them like equal, equal parts on that one because they're both, you know, not great, you know. And both are, again, under $100, so we're gonna stay with that. Now, the next obvious thing you should be looking at is when I push this around, I grab the, I grab the welder and I roll it around my shop because there's no handle, there's nothing to grab onto. The Vivor, Comes with a handle, yeah, optional. Well, you don't have to have the handle if you don't want it, I guess, but it comes with a nice grab handle. So you can handle it around like a shopping cart and just go to town to take your welder to whatever stationery you need to get the job done. So, yeah, big difference, big difference, big difference, you know, enclosed, not enclosed, uh, you know, just some crazy little things. Yeah, little things that uh, make for a good welder. I'm gonna turn these around and we're gonna look at the back just for a minute because even at the back of these two, there's a difference. Yeah. So we're at the back and I'm doing the best I can with my workbench because we were supposed to shoot this outside today and it's pouring rain, which we haven't had rain forever around here, but it was like, yeah, it had to rain today when I want to do this. Let's go to the back of the Harbor Freight Machine. Uh, here we have these holes with the slots and you put your chain through to lock your chain and your bottle. I've had the chains pop off of here and had the bottle, you know, go for a ride, but Overall, the bottle's not held. 
just the chain is the only thing that helps hold that bottle in and you have a lower one and a top one so it's like yeah you know it's it's not the end of the world but obviously they didn't spend any time worried about your bottle so now the vivor has these large half has real half moon you know slots in here where your bottle sits in here and then you put your chain across and they're higher again holding your bottle more secure so yeah this to me is a better design now that would be up to you. I run uh, flux core a lot, so I don't use the bottle. So not having that, that's that's fine. I could put some hooks back here and hang some tools or you know whatever, I guess anyways. But it's just the fact that this is thought out and we have nice slots. Also, the slots are on top with the chain coming down. So what that means is if you go over a bump, the chain is not gonna necessarily get out of here and unlock itself. I have had the chain pop on this thing and had the bottle, you know, Fall, fall over so when you're moving around you run over some bumpy stuff you know that's all it takes so the back of these two machines and again you look at the wheels I don't know if you can see them very well but you can see the difference in the two wheels yeah but the uh, the back of the machines yeah there's even a difference for your money so yeah okay so height wise uh, probably should put tape measure on but you can see I mean th this is definitely higher wider higher it's about the same depth the both of them but just having a larger uh, welding cart for almost the same money as this one here uh, I would pay that little bit more money and get you a nice welding cart that you can live with for a very long time and even if the machines do as I've been getting smaller in the last little while uh, this is still going to be a better cart all the way around it's, it offers more storage and just the ability to work better with you with the hooks and all the rest of it, plus uh, we've got this handle right here. The uh, Harbor Freight one, uh, this is the next problem, of course. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this one. Retail, uh, resale, resale price, you know, you, you can probably get $20 or something for this thing. That's about all you're going to get. If I decided I was going to resell uh, this one, I could easily get, still get like my 50 bucks or maybe even more out of it because it's a larger, nicer cart for the machine than this thing you know and harbor freight's a reputation of course is uh, synonymous with you know cheap cheap tools at uh, cheap prices whatever and a lot of times if you only need to use the tool one time you go over to harbor freight i've bought a lot of stuff from harbor freight over the years so i'm guilty as everybody else just like this right here was a you know jack benny or whatever decision but the thing was I didn't know about Beaver. I didn't even know a cart like this could be had for this price, or I would have. I would have just jumped on it and purchased this right away. Now, uh, I will be supplying a link in the description below where you can find this welding cart. We also have some other really cool welding stuff in from Beaver that we're going to have to get into, but that won't be today. But I just wanted to show you the, the two carts side by side. I thought, man, this one solves all my headaches that this one had. So yeah definitely a win for beaver right here a quick last minute word about the uh, link too it'll be for this specific cart uh this one sells for about 86 dollars it's not the actual bottom but the actual bottom line one that beaver had is sold out and it's been out of stock for a while we don't even know when it'll come back in stock so we're not even discussing it or whatever but i will provide you with a link below for this one just wanted to make sure that was clear before we uh, move on. Hey, I've got something to give away, and I've got a really nice prize today, and I uh, also have something that we're lined up for the next giveaway. So that's what we got to get into right now. Yeah. Okay, now we're set up. <laughs> I've had to put some stuff away. <laughs> yeah, this place is a mess. This is what we're drawing for today. Uh, this is the Egret Tech. It's a portable power supply, 300 watt. It can be charged in your car, it can be charged in your home, or it can be charged from solar. Yeah, so it's a really interesting device. And it's as compact as crap. And I'll put a link in the description below where you can find this guy. The Plume 300 is, uh, it's just so portable. It's great for like camping, hiking, or anytime you want to take some power with you to charge your laptops, your phones, anytime you're gonna be remote or something and you need some power. That's about as small and as compact as anything I've ever seen, but it's it's pretty cool. So we're gonna give it away. And these right here, this big stack of tickets, this is the this is our viewers. So somebody who watches the show is gonna get this. And I'm yeah, that's priority post. It's heavy. <laughs> God. 
we had a lot of entries from Texas this time around, so I was like, ooh, oh, somebody wants this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> all righty. I'll mix up the tickets from pretty good here. Maybe stir them up. Oh, it is so warm in here. Okay, we've got, what do we got here? Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this is... <laughs> I never, I really was wondering if we'd ever see his name in here. Oh, jeez. Keith, you're in Milton, New Hampshire. Keith, guess what? I'm going to priority post this thing to you. <laughs> and you can put it beside all your Vivor tools. Because <laughs> Keith watches the show a lot. He's a, he's probably, he's an amazing guy. He really is. And uh, I was thinking either him or Don maybe, but wow. <laughs> Keith, you, yes, yeah, buddy, you're, you're getting this. There was a lot of new names in there this week, too, and I was kind of wondering if it would be somebody, but uh, I don't think Keith, no, Keith has never, he's never actually won anything from us. Uh, we, a couple years ago, we had a just a fun thing where I said, like, let's just do a second draw for like a booby prize or something, and this is who came up with this, Keith, and he was, he was as as nice about it as anybody. He took the joke as just absolutely calm. We shipped the item to him, <laughs> which was a, uh, a Craig, uh, one of those angle things for cutting with uh, a table, small uh, hand saws and things. And I guess maybe he approved. He never, you know, he, he's emailed me a couple times and informed me about buying the Beaver stuff. So, you know, yeah, it was like great guy. But uh, Keith, I think you deserve it, I guess. Uh, wow, the Plume 300. I don't know what you're gonna do with it, but uh, you know, enjoy. <laughs> let's get to our, let's get to the next giveaway. I've got something else that, uh, it's very similar. Uh, and it's, it, it's gotta go out of here too. So we gotta get rid of this because it's just taking up space. And like I said, I like to try to keep the, keep some of that stuff out of here. But when we come back. So the, the next thing we're giving away. I don't have a draw date for this thing, so it's like, you know, depending on whatever it's available to when we can do a, a draw, but uh, here we go. This is a similar sort of situation as what we just gave away, but not really. This is sort of different. Uh, this is from a, a company that does a lot of really cool car jumper stuff. This is Gulu. This is a Gulu power pack. It has a, of course, it has the three different flashing mode, you know, lighty thing with the SOS and all the rest of it on here, and a flashlight. It's a lithium ion type, and it's Fairly heavy. So everything I ship is heavy. What goes on with that? Anyways, it's 100% charged up, ready to go. And then this comes with the Gulu. It plugs into the cigarette lighter plug on the end here, and it makes 110 power up to 150 watt and will run some lights or, well, whatever you want to plug into it. Again, great for camping, boating, hiking, whatever, or just outdoor stuff. And also you have a USB and you have a USB-C. So you can charge, you know, laptop, phone, whatever off of it as well. So it's a great little power pack to have to carry around with you if you're gonna be remote or anything like that. Now, it only comes with this and uh, it comes with a USB, oh, okay, USB-C to USB for charging. And I'm not sure about the rest of it because it also came with this, which is a cigarette lighter plug, which would have to be wired up to something, you know, yeah. Uh, maybe your car battery or something you can charge off of. I'm not sure why they include this with the kit. I don't have any paperwork to go with this thing. And again, uh, this was one of those items and it happens every once in a while. Something comes in and there's no paperwork with it. Uh, the Gulu was sent in and as far as I can tell, yeah, there was no, no uh, manual with it at the time. So we had to get it off the internet and just sort of read it off to you guys when we did our review. Uh, the other thing it has is a USB-C to USB-C which again, I don't know if you can charge it that way or not. I assume you can. We tried a charging system, which we're gonna show you using this method with the USB-C to USB onto our control package from our solar. It didn't work. Yeah, it was drawing too much power because of this. And we just didn't have the power back up to do this. So we ended up using a charging station, which it did work, but it was like, that's two different companies. I can't get into all that. So anyways, Viewers, you want to get this? You want it? Yeah, you know, we're going we're gonna to draw for it. So, how do we get it on the drawing? Well, let me see if I can get this. Okay, this will be bubble, bubble wrapped or something when we 
ship it out of here if I can get it back in the box. And uh, how we get it? Okay, we're going to write to ctrewards at gmx.com. And in the subject line of your email, you want goo, G-O-O, -O, or it could be G-0-0, zero zero, I wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> now, one uh, entry per household from anywhere. Even if you've won before, you can put your name in for this. Uh, I've never had that restriction about how many things you might be able to win off the show. I think we've got somebody out there that won, I think, three or four items now. So like, we're trying to figure out how he wins every day. He didn't put his name in this week, so I guess that's why he didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in the subject line, Google, and then in the body of the email, just your name and address, not even your phone number. We don't need that. We don't, we don't really want it in there. Just your name and address. And uh, we'll pull tickets just like we did today for that when it comes time, probably sometime either next week or the week right after. I'm not sure when we'll get to it, but we will get a draw up for that. And then we'll have something else, of course, to give away. So it's like, cool. That's one of the reasons you need to keep watching. You know, please watch <laughs> and subscribe and <laughs> ring the notice bell. <laughs> Give us a like, you know, get, boop that like button, whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. It's hot out and, and humid. It's been raining and now the humidity's gone up. So oh, lovely. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I'm out of here. Over and out.